there are any corrections? Okay, seeing none, the minutes stand approved. The next item is communications. Anybody have any communications? Charlie? <clears throat> At the request of the board, I spoke to Roger Kelly about doing a workshop at one of our finance subcommittee meetings on negotiations and he will be able to attend our October 11th um, finance subcommittee meeting and he could, could come at six o'clock so we could start a half an hour earlier so he could give us an hour's presentation and I also spoke to him on some other issues and he will address those also. Okay, why don't we go ahead and, and set that up then, the finance subcommittee meeting for that. For that date will be at 6 p.m. And it would certainly be good if everybody could come. I think it should be very informative, helpful. Um, I do have one communication about uh, the MSMA School Leadership Development Program. They have a, um, just a one day seminar they give on basic boardmanship um, skills. Um, they're offering one at Falmouth High School on Saturday, November 19th from 9 to 3. And this, I've been to this, and I found it very worthwhile. So I would, um, you know, encourage any new board members who, who can to attend. And if you'd like to attend, you just talk to Connie Brown. She'll sign you up. I also received yesterday um, a pamphlet called Health Risk Behaviors Among Maine Youth. Um, which was a survey done through the Division of Maternal and Child Health of the Department of Human Services. And I'll just pass this around. It's kind of a sobering view of the at-risk behaviors, if any of you feel like taking a look at it. Okay, the next item is superintendent's report. Connie? Thank you. Um, as I'm sure everybody is well aware, the building renovation projects are going along. Uh, they may look like they'll never really get done enough for us to open school, but we can assure you that they will. I've asked uh, Sue Weatherby to uh, join us this evening to share with not only the board, but also anybody who happens to be tuned in tonight to get an update, um, a communication. She's given us a draft communication that will be mailed home to all K-8 students. and. Uh, also be available here to fill in. I'd just like to say right now that the communication back and forth between the uh, people on the construction site and also our clerk of the works, uh, Dan Reed, who is also, of course, our maintenance director, Sue working as our communicator, sort of a liaison. Um, there's been a great deal of communication and it certainly helped to solve a lot of problems right on the spot. The asbestos abatement is substantially finished. We have some piece still going, um, but they are definitely going to make their August 26th deadline. I know that there was some concern whether or not that could actually happen. It is happening. Um, I know that there are still many questions from some teachers as to exactly which rooms will be set up, when can they get in and do the kind of individual teacher setup they would like to do. We have some answers to that. For them and we also I'd like to just start by saying uh, we have two phone numbers that we'd like anybody teachers staff parents to be aware of and these will be published in kind of a neon flashing lights I guess over um, maybe over the highway here at some point Sue O'Quinn who is our system scheduler is uh, at seven nine nine three four two seven I'll say that again seven nine nine three four two seven it's a number that during the day um, is available. Uh, Sue usually is there. There is an answering phone if she isn't. Um, and it is a way to get a question answered or at least a question taken with some, uh, somebody calling back later. And again, Sue Weatherby is often available at 7992868, which is community services. Um, if they don't have the answer, they can take the question. Uh, we also would ask people now that the um, principal's offices are back in line. That is, I think the middle school is back in, right? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. You're back in tomorrow. To continue to call the regular school telephone numbers um, because people are there who can give you an update as we go along also so that there are a number of ways in which um, you can get an answer to your questions, whatever they may be. However, we are going to be mailing things home. There was a piece 
uh, earlier in the courier. The next issue of the courier, of course, will have some updates. That doesn't come out until after school starts, so we're going to use this opportunity to update us. Sue? your packet um, a copy of or a draft of the letter that will be going home K-8 on Thursday and um, since you're out there speaking with people who have concerns in the community you probably know better than I whether I have covered everything um, especially the questions that you're being asked I'm so close to the project I think I assume that um, they may have the answers and in fact they may not so this is the draft um, I would like you to, in fact, I can take you through it if you like, and um, I am going to um, add to it tomorrow if necessary, if there are some questions that, that aren't answered. If I don't have the answers, I certainly can get them in time for this to go out. This is just one of the three attempts that we're using to um, bring people up to speed on the buildings, access, parking, um, all of those things. Um, the letter should get home by Saturday. We're planning site visits um, at 2, 4, and 6 on um, August 31st. Buses will depart from the back of the high school. And if you're going to be part of the site walk or the site visits, you have to park at the high school. We won't have any opportunity to park on campus. They'll still be um, doing the striping um, hopefully everything will be paid by then, and, but they still may be striping. And um, so we need to just take the buses um, to the facilities. We'll be going both to the middle school and to the Pond Cove school. We'll actually go um, the bus access routes to both of those buildings. So everyone does need to meet um, down in the back of the high school. And those tours are again at 2, 4, and 6. You don't need to make reservations. Um, we'll have ample buses there to transport anyone who wants to go. We'll be assisted by some high school students um, who will be going on tour with us as well as I think by some of the Pond Cove um, Parents Association. Um, one other vehicle we're using to update people is um, to do a, we did a site walk today and videoed it for the cable, cable access channel. Um, and that will be on the cable TV on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, and it will be on three times a day. And I have announced the times in this um, letter. I'll be going over that again tomorrow. It's a good dress rehearsal, I decided, but it, it needs work so that, um, once again, people can see the whole perspective. Um, I noticed in viewing it that I knew where we were, but someone who's not real familiar with the site itself may not know where we were because it just looks like lots and lots of open space. Um, so we will be editing that tomorrow, and um, that should be ready to go on the air on Sunday. So that's one other opportunity people have to be brought up to speed on what's happening. Um, I can take you through this if you like, or you can, um, would you like me to do that? It might be a good opportunity for you to see if everybody can understand. Okay. Um, as Connie alluded to, the abatement um, is basically done as of today. Um, tomorrow they'll be putting in the new transformer at the high school, so the middle school complex and the high school complex will be without power. And what that necessitated was for the abaters to go in, and I think they had 21 workers working all weekend um, to get the project done, because once we cut the electricity, um, they need to start to take down the containment. So the building basically had to be done. So they're basically going to be out of there as of tomorrow, except for a couple of little pieces here and there that they're having to go back in and take care of. Um, as of August 22nd, we did get many areas of both buildings back. So the re-entry and the cleaning process has been ongoing now for a couple of weeks. Um, if you look down the hallways of the buildings, you might um, be unclear as to whether or not we, we will be ready to open, but I think we will be. I think basically almost all of the rooms have the supplies and, and the desks and so forth back in. 
and all of the things that are going to happen in the next few days are really going to bring everything together. So it still looks like we've got a long way to go, but it's really just finishing touches. Um, just for the um, community, we wanted to let them know that a great deal has been accomplished in regards to the site work. Um, almost all of the underground work has been completed, the sewer, the drainage, the electrical, and um, to this point, all of the blasting is complete, at least all of the ledge that they know about. And in fact, it's come in um, fairly under what they had estimated. And so as far as they know, the blasting has um, really come to an end. Um, the new entrance and access road going to the middle school and the elementary school off of Scott Dyer Road will be paved and ready for the first day of school. There is a pedestrian walkway that goes along that entryway into the school, so the walkers will have access to the middle school. Um, the fourth graders will use this entry and access way as well, those that are both in the middle school um, 1930s building and those that are in the portables. The new access road at the middle school will accommodate buses, staff parking, parent drop-off, and visitor parking. Um, in regard to Pond Cove, the Pond Cove staff will use this entryway, um, as will visitors going to the Pond Cove school, because this is the access to the parking area for that facility. Um, however, the Pond Cove buses will not. The Pond Cove buses will use the new access road that comes through the high school and um, goes up past Holman Field, and there's a bus circle there. That's where the Pond Cove students will be getting off, and that will be permanent when the project is finished. So they will be utilizing that new bus route and access road. Um, those children will be dropped off, and there will be a paved walkway that goes around the, uh, the bottom of the Lunt building and goes up the back side of the Pond Cove School, because the main entrance to the Pond Cove School temporarily will be the back of the breezeway. Parent drop-off for Pond Cove students will be um, at the top of the Pond Cove School in the circle that goes off of Scott Dyer Road. And that's where the, where the walkers will also access. And what they will do is they will come along a construction fence um, between the playground and the Thomas Memorial Library. And that's how they will get onto the Pond Cove facility. I have a question. Yes. Will we still have use of the crossing guard? And where will she be? We still have her? That's a good question, and I don't know the answer to that. I would assume. Um, you have two places where walkers are going to access the building? That's a good point, Charlie. I don't know. I would say that she definitely would need to be down by the new entrance to the middle school. Um, but we probably will still have some children that need to cross over to go to the Brentwood neighborhood that would be walkers from Pond Cove. So um, that's something I'll have to look into and I will get an answer for folks um, on that. So I have a question. Will all buses, um, when they swing through the new loop and drop off at Pond Cove, mm -hmm. they will then, I assume, drop off at kindergarten area if they have any students for there? And then they, do they go out and come back in the new entrance road to drop off fourth graders? There will be three different stops for those buses. Um, the way we have it set up, we have the bus are sta buses staggered. So some will be starting at the fourth grade drop off, which will be around the portables at the middle school. Um, and then they will be going to the Pond Cove School and finishing up at the high school. Some will go the reverse. They'll start at the high school and, you know, so that we don't have buses lined up. So we do have bus orders established. We hopefully have them starting and finishing um, with a schedule that complements where they're going. For instance, we should have the high school, that K-1 pickup, um, be last if the buses are heading south. On, on Route 77 so they can make a right-hand turn when they come out of the high school. So we've tried to take all of those things into consideration so that um, it, will go, it will go smoothly. Obviously, the bus runs are going to be a little bit longer because there are three stops. Um, one of the concerns that we've had um, all along in the construction um, process is is that um, 
people are not paying attention to the signage um, outside the construction area. Um, in fact, I, coaching field hockey, have been in that vicinity in the evening a great deal, and there are bikers and joggers and kids from neighborhoods coming right through the middle of the construction site. Um, with little regard to the signs or the, or the gates or fences that are up. And I just can't urge people enough to really stay out of that area between the two school buildings. That is a hard hat area, and there's absolutely no admittance um, between Pond Cove and the middle school without authorization. So I do encourage people to really pay attention to the, to the fences and to the signs. Um, once school is in operation, there will be access to the middle school playground. Um, there will be a gate that will allow people to access that, and they will have access to the Pond Cove playgrounds. So there's really no need to be cutting across um, areas that they shouldn't be in. So we just encourage folks to, to stay out of there for their own safety. On page two, I indicated um, the opportunities they have to learn about the project. Um, this letter, um, the site visits um, on the 31st, and then via the cable access channel. Um, because Pond Cove or the middle school weren't putting out s separate mailings this year, we tried to combine all of the information that would be very specific to middle school students and, and that information that would be specific to Pond Cove students. So. Um, I was assisted in this, this mailing by um, Beth and um, Nancy St. John at, at Pond Cove and by Nancy Hutton at the middle school. So in regard to middle school students, um, Nancy's just reminding them that um, the middle school hours will remain the same from 7.50 to 2.20 and um, that all students should be in their uh, homerooms by 7.45. Um, Students should not arrive, the middle school students should not be arriving to the school campus until after 7.30 a.m. as teachers are not on duty until that time. Um, we have constructed a temporary bus drop-off um, at the middle school. The, that bus drop-off will circle around the fourth grade portables, which are just outside the industrial tech wing. Um, and probably on right field of the baseball field, if you're more familiar with the, the baseball diamond. Um, the children that ride the buses will enter the building through the doors next to the band room. That will, in fact, become a temporary middle school main entrance. That will be the entrance that is also handicapped accessible. Parent drop-off will be um, via that new roadway that comes around the middle school athletic field and the, the drop-off for um, students by parents is in the area of where the basketball courts used to be. So students will be dropped off there and their entry to the building will be at the end of the industrial tech wing, okay? Walkers will also enter the building. Middle school walkers will enter the building there too. And that, as I said, was, is the handicapped access. Um, lunch will be served in the cafeteria the first day of school. Um, the cafeteria is not quite back together. That is the last area that is being um, abated. Um, and they did run into some complications there so, and had to take out the serving counter. And, and um, so the, for the first couple of weeks, we will be satelliting um, hot lunch from Pond Cove. So students may purchase lunch, but it will be hot lunch or they may purchase milk, and they'll pretty much do that in the same manner as they've been doing it. Fifth and sixth grade teachers will meet their students on the playground the first day of school. Students should meet their teaching teams as they did in last June's orientation. The teachers will then organize them into homeroom groups. If it's raining, the teachers and students will meet in the cafeteria. And once you're dropped off at that bus loop, there will be paved access and handicapped access to the middle school calf. Seventh and eighth grade students um, are, have already received their schedules and they should report to their first period class from homeroom by 745. Um, information specific to Pond Cove students, the school hours, um, first through fourth graders will be 830 to 3, morning kindergarten 830 to 1110, 
and afternoon kindergarten, 1220 to 3. Um, the Pond Cove um, staff will be, in fact, they'll have extra staff monitoring the arrival and departure and recess for all students on the site. There will also be um, construction fences up to, as the project progresses, they'll move these construction fences so that children will know where they're to walk, where they can play, and so forth. Um, and that, that will be ongoing through the project, and we'll try to keep people apprised of, of what's happening there. The specials, art, music, and physical education will be held in the classrooms this year. Um, phys ed um, may be going outside, weather permitting, but after that point, it will be in the classrooms as well. Um, no student should be on the grounds prior to 8 a.m. And um, that's for walkers coming onto the grounds and parent drop off, as there will be no supervision out there until 8. So we're asking parents to please not drop children off until 8. Uh, at the high school, um, the kindergartners and the first graders, um, the two first grades that are being housed at the high school are Mrs. Imperch and Ms. Hassan's room. Um, the bus and parent drop-off in good weather will be at the playground, which is, if you're not familiar with the high school, which is halfway down towards the back of the building, um, pretty much across from the parking area below the tennis courts. And there's a little turnaround down there, and in good weather, the students coming to school will be dropped off there. In inclement weather, um, they will be using the new bus pull-off um, that they have put in at the high school and um, this will allow traffic to proceed in both directions, and that's always been a concern when the buses were loading and unloading cars weren't able to pass in either direction, and with the bus pull-off, they'll be able to do that. Uh, Sue, I have two questions for the kindergarten. Um, are you gonna use the same green sign, red sign in the window? I was just getting to that. If um, the weather is questionable and you're not sure whether it's good weather or bad weather, um, and we do have lots of days like that. There'll be a big red poster board um, in the kindergarten wing. So as you come into the, the school complex, if there's a red poster board in the window, that means you're inside. It means actually stop, come in the front doors, or come in the main entrance. If there is a green poster board in the, in, in the window, that means go. Go ahead, down, back. They are going to be outside for outdoor recess. My second question was the new kindergarten bus loop at the high school. Um, do you want parents pulling in there to drop their kindergartners off or is that exclusively for the buses? It's my understanding that it's exclusively for buses and mm -hmm. I believe it's exclusively for the, um, the kindergarten first grade buses. When the high school buses come in they pull down in front um, of where the access to the gym lobby is and they're down beyond the traffic, and, and there isn't a hazard in terms of traffic going through. So they, I don't believe at this point they're planning to use that pull-off, but that could change. But so the parents should not pull into that for Absolutely kindergarten should not children. pull into it. And when um, kindergarten parents pick up their children, um, in the past, parents have gone by and parked and then had to walk in whereas first graders have been released with the walkers at Pond Cove to come out and wait for their parents. Um, and do you know what the system will be with that? Will parents of kindergarten in those two first grade classes need to park and go inside to get their children? Or I would assume that that would continue. Um, they will have um, choices on where to park. Um, they have the staff parking lot, which is out in front of the high school, and they'll have the new community slash student parking lot, and usually by three o'clock in the afternoon, um, that parking lot will become available. Certainly, that probably will be full if you're picking up or dropping off a kindergarten child in the middle of the day. So that probably wouldn't be an option for them then. But I would say yes, they have to find a spot either around that horseshoe or up in the upper faculty lot in front of the high school. I assume that would remain the same. So will that kindergarten drop-off have signage? To say bus traffic only? Yes, it will. Okay. 
Okay, moving on, all pickups from, and I think we pretty much have covered this, for, for kindergarten or first grade would always be from the front of the building. Um, there's never dismissal from the playground. So um, just arrival in the morning um, gets dropped off at the playground. Um, moving on to the fourth graders. Um, the fourth graders, of course, will be housed at the middle school, but they'll still be on the Pond Cove schedule, so their time frame will be 8.30 to 3. Um, walkers and parent drop off and, and bus students will use that new middle school entrance, and everything in regard to fourth graders is the same as it is for middle school, middle school students other than the time that I they'll have, be in session. I have a couple of questions about the fourth graders. Um, if it is they will be dropped off at the middle school and go out to the playground like at the middle school playground like they did at Pond Cove if it's good weather mm -hmm. and in bad weather um, they'll go to the middle school calf middle school cafeteria okay. the new bus loop that goes around the fourth grade portables will that be restricted to buses only oh absolutely that whole roadway coming in there is only for handicap parking bus traffic and probably school deliveries but there will be no parent drop off in that area whatsoever. Okay, and okay. if you are picking up a fourth grader at three o'clock, mm -hmm. you would then go to the middle school, the new school access road and pick up there? Yes. And then you would go out and pick up any other children from Pond Cove at, at the end of uh, the fourth grade way. Exactly right. Exactly right. I think I did skip the Pond Cove uh, grades one through three, walkers and parent drop off, and, and I have said this before, but I will say it again. Walkers and parent drop off and pick up will be at the end of what was the fourth grade wing this year to be the second grade wing, um, but I think we all know it as the fourth grade wing, and that's the circle coming off of Scott Dyer Road. Would, will parents be able to park in that little circle, or it will be as in the past where you pull up along Scott Dyer Road? Well, because we'll be dismissing walkers from that, that exit, I would say that it will be the same in the past. Probably the, the less traffic we have in there, the safer it will be for the children who are going to be walking. So I would say you probably should not park in that That loop in that will be marked. I just can see parents in the morning pulling through the loop to drop off kids, and I don't know if we want that or if we do And that may that. be some place that we want to have some sort of crossing guard or some, someone monitoring kids coming and going if parent drop-off is going to be in that area. And that's something that, that we'll have to discuss further. Yeah, and will the children that are, um, you know, released with the walkers and waiting for parent pickup, will they be supervised for a good 10 or 15 minutes? I'm just thinking if parents are picking up at a number of these three sites, mm -hmm. if you have children in that age, it may take parents a while to get them. I would assume that that would be the case. There, will, will there be someone out there to monitor those kids that are being picked up by parents? Are you having these calls? <laughs> All right. I think the plan, part of what we need to begin to coordinate is the connection between the dismissal time and the buses, but there will be people that will be accompanying the various groups of kids as they, as they make their way down there. It probably will take two or three days, I would imagine, until we know what's happening at the other end, but they will be with adults. So could I just say one thing about your, um, your letter, which is very good, but just listening to all Beth's questions about the parent pickup. I think you should add a line in here somewhere that, that discourages people from just gratuitously picking up their kids all the time because we have even less space than before. It's even more dangerous than before. Um, and, you know, a lot of people just do it out of habit. And if we could just encourage, they'll probably figure it out soon enough. But um, I think it, it might be a good idea okay. to make it clear that it's go going to be even more inconvenient to do it than it has been. Good point. Early dismissals. Um, the format at, at the K-3 will be pretty much the way it has been. Um, the office is notified in writing by parents that a student will be picked up um, or dismissed prior to 3 o'clock, and parents should go to the Pond Cove or K office to meet the child and sign them out. Um, fourth grade students will bring written notice to the classroom teacher 
The teacher will send all notes to the Pond Cove office. Pond Cove staff will notify Mrs. Robinson in the middle school office, and then parents should go to the middle school office when picking up a fourth grade student for early dismissal. And I think that's important. Yes. Okay. I think it's really critical for folks to, uh, for parents to know that it's going to be very difficult for us to forward phone calls that come in so that we really do need to have the written notes um, when we have children on three different sites in order to accomplish that uh, phone call that comes in at one o'clock or two o'clock in the afternoon would be very, very difficult. So we really need to, uh, to ask that. Right now, there, there is no communication between the portables and the main buildings. There will be intercoms installed shortly after the start of school. But in terms of opening schools, that was not a priority. And I guess it was not part of any of the contracts. So that's something that we're trying to, to work out pretty much in-house with Dan Reed. So it will happen. Um, the fourth grade portables will have communication with the middle school office, and the Pond Cove portables will have communication with the Pond Cove office, but it, that will not happen on day one. So it will require a messenger actually getting these messages um, from the offices out to the portables. If certainly in an emergency, we're happy to do that, but it's, it's not something that we want to make part of you know, the daily routine if we can avoid it. Um, the school lunch program um, for Pond Cove students, hot lunch will be available as usual. Um, milk may be purchased for 30 cents. Students will use the envelope system at Pond Cove as they have done in the past. And um, those will be collected in the classrooms each Monday morning. The first grade that is being housed at the high school will be getting hot lunch in the high school calf. And, and just for folks' information, we do have the time frame that they will be in there. Um, that is a time frame when high school students do not eat. So they will be um, in there when high school students are not having their own lunch shifts. The middle school, yes. In the past, um, I believe, maybe I'm wrong, that when uh, the high school hasn't been eating, they've been using that for study hall. And I assume that that has been entirely cleared for this time period that any study halls or whatever will be elsewhere. I think I'd like to defer that to Mr. DeFusco or Mr. Ray. At this point, we have not done that. Uh, it's something we could look at. But what the situation is is that uh, there are 38 first grade students who will be eating. Uh, the tables will be set up up front and cleared. Um, and we did not see that it would be a, a problem. However, if, if you'd like us to look at that, that's something we can, can look at. Uh, it's a large room, and we felt that uh, uh, the relatively small number of people between the two lunch periods that would be there. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I might be able to give you the number if I look it up, but it's not a large number of students who would, would be there, other than some seniors also who use it as a drop-in situation. But if that's a concern, we can look at that. It's pretty well delineated. The first grade tables are way up in front near the counter. We have talked. I've talked with uh, Sue King about where we would set up and what we would do. Mm -hmm. But um, I'll leave that to you know, okay. concerns. We can look into that if you'd like. I would have some concerns about behavior and how well those high school students are being monitored because uh, first graders would be a very impressionable age. And if you're trying to have some decorum in how they're eating, if they're being distracted by some adolescent behaviors, I would have some concern. That's, um, well, it's something for us to be concerned about and look at, but I would hope that their decorum and behavior would be appropriate. And I, and I do think, for the most part, uh, uh, the experience we've had with the younger children in the building, that the, the uh, upperclassmen have been pretty good with those children. No, I, I have no problem with yeah. that, but it, it's what that room is being used for, and mm -hmm. it's not in a, in a sense a classroom situation, and therefore I would have some concern about how well they're being monitored. Yeah. One of the changes uh, that's in process right now is that it would only be 
uh, all freshmen and sophomores will be in individual classrooms during that time period and only juniors and seniors who are free would be in that area. Uh, it will be a smaller number than it has been in the past. And that's all I can tell you at, at this point, but I, I appreciate your concerns. Then what I would do is impress upon the student body at the beginning of school about this time frame and the expected behaviors of those students. I have adolescents. I yes. know what can happen. Okay. My name is Pat Cotter. I'm the SAC school rep, or one of the two, and I'm going to be a senior in high school. I really don't think that there'll be a problem. Um, I think there's always a student, I mean, a teacher, supervisor there. Usually there's two um, that they usually sit in the front of the cafeteria, probably close to where the first grade will be. Um, most of the high school students sit in the back cafeteria or on the sides. The only time they ever go to the front cafeteria is to actually get food at the window. Um, I, since the underclassmen will be in classrooms, I really don't see a big problem with it. Are there any other questions? I, I would think this is a situation where the staff can be in touch with each other and, and see how it's working. If it's a problem, I'm sure it can be worked out. It's certainly a big enough room, I would think, to accommodate two first grade classrooms and high school students. So. Sue, my question is, who's eating with the first graders? Will the teachers be there, or is there an aide there, or who's supervising those 38 first graders? The teachers will, will not be at that particular time, but there will be two adults, two uh, aides that have been working in, in, in Pond Cove, either or at the first grade. Um. And along those lines, um, is it the teachers or the aides who will walk them to the cafeteria? That's a long walk. I would imagine that, yes, that's somebody. <laughs> that, that isn't, uh, uh, hasn't been made certain at this point, but I, I would certainly mm -hmm. think that there would be, yeah. Because that is a long way. It's yep. downstairs. Yep. Sue, I would suggest you add under... Um, Middle school fourth graders will utilize middle school cafeteria that hot lunch will be the only thing available all year to them um, because I think it might be deceptive that if they read the middle school portion mm -hmm. at the beginning and think a la carte is available after the first few weeks that maybe it would be for those children also and my understanding is it won't be. Okay. Good point. Okay, and about the only thing that we haven't included in this um, letter home to parents is that um, really pertains to high school students and to the community. Um, what was the student parking lot at, at the high school is now the bus parking lot. And we have a new student parking lot, um, community, student slash community parking lot, which is across from the end of the community services walkway. It's what we used to call lower home and field. And um, that will be the new student parking area at the high school. So, excuse me, is that as large as the other parking lot? It isn't, um, but they also have um, a number of spaces available to them in the lower back parking lot okay. at the high school. So I believe the students will be using both of those areas to park. I think there's just over 60 uh, spaces in the new lot. Any other questions? Yes. Um, with the Pond Cove lunch situation. Um, it's my understanding they're eating part of the year in classrooms, part of the year in cafeteria. Is that definite yet? or? Well, once the renovation to that part of the building starts and they're anticipating December, January, then I believe the students will be eating in the classrooms for the second half of the, the year. Half. The cafeteria will be unavailable. Mm -hmm. Is this 20 minute time frame shorter than last year? Maybe Nancy can address that. Didn't we fight hard for five more minutes last year? Uh, we found that we weren't able to work it into the schedule this year. Mm -hmm. We needed to shorten that time. We talked with the students, with the teachers, with the supervising folks, and with the cafeteria quality committee. And in doing our baseline in other districts, we found that it's comparable a 20 minute time, a five minute passage time is mm -hmm. comparable to other districts given all, all the, um, the variables, the number of kids fed, the distance, and so forth. So the passage time is not part of that 20 minutes? No. Or, oh, OK. All right. 20 minutes in the cafeteria, okay. five minutes transition. Oh, OK. I thought that included the 
Yeah. Okay. Good. Any other questions? Oh, Sue, so this is a valiant effort because yes. there's <laughs> a lot of information, and and I hope actually some of these questions have have helped. Definitely. Um, but I think I think people want this information, and um, I appreciate you going to all this effort. Okay. Well, Sue. this will be mailed out Thursday or Friday, so they should have it in hand Saturday. Um, if not Saturday, certainly by Monday. So I have one comment. As I was reading it, um, I kept seeing references to the new middle school entrance. And I, I guess maybe since I know the building project, I keep thinking, no, that's not the middle school entrance. It's going to be the whole you know, school, elementary, middle school. And maybe we should start calling it that and clarifying it, that that new road in is the new school entrance. I don't know if anybody else actually that makes me think that is there any way to include just a map so people know exactly where we're where we're talking about <laughs> no really because the, it is a new entrance and we're talking about something else for pond cove for the for the bus drop just, just so people can visualize it because the only thing going through this tonight i'm thinking people don't know what we're talking mm -hmm. about but um we have access to a lot of maps yeah. um, those that i've looked simple. at it in regard to the building project are about as clear as mud but um, maybe a, we can come up with a very simple the, sketch you know, that, that shows. delineate the, the, the things, because especially on the first few days, people are going to be distracted by everything going on, not necessarily looking at the sign. So it might be a good idea just to include one. OK, we'll try it's to do that. A simple one. You could draw it yourself, probably. <laughs> <laughs> we don't need those architects drawing. Anything else? I think Beth had a comment. Just a couple other things about couple of weeks, the first grade teachers in Pond Cove and also the first grade classes in the high school, the teachers will be eating lunch for those children. That's a practice that we've always had with first graders. And also uh, during the first, at least during the first week, all staff will be on duty for all duties until we begin to get routine staff and get people on the right, right direction. I just have one announcement and this is in regard this is not in regard to the building project, but it is in regard to the buses. Um, we do have direct um, communication with all of the buses now, and we have someone monitoring that radio at all times. So if your child does get on the wrong bus, um, the bus drivers have um, communication with one another, and now they have communication to the base. Um, what we encourage parents to do is please stay home. In most cases, um, the bus drivers will talk. They'll talk with the dispatcher, and your child will be delivered home. However, if you're at school looking for them, you've complicated the problem. So what we would like you to do is please stay home. Um, your child is safe. And um, at that point, we would keep them on the bus and deliver them at the end of the run, and they probably would bring them right to the house. So um, please stay home. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, the fact of the matter is that what Sue has been going through is just a really um, a small portion of the kinds of things that, um, that she is monitoring as well as other people and the administrators. Uh, I guess at this point what I would like to assure the parent community is that this really is well in hand. There will, however, be moments when everybody will have to go slow We'll have to keep calm, and we'll have to understand that establishing the routine this fall is going to be a little more difficult than it normally is. So your patience and your understanding will be appreciated. Um, but I think we've tried very hard to think of all the various uh, possibilities. This is a good example of most of them. No doubt a few other things will be occurring to us. Uh, and as the uh, building increasingly is put back together, staff will be in. It, in some cases already is in, in some cases will be uh, available um, either Friday or Monday of next week. And of course, I'll staff back in on Tuesday and Wednesday with the children coming back in on Mon Thursday and Friday. So um, it's, it's actually falling into place and should, uh, but I do realize that there's bound to be a few glitches. So appreciate your patience. Any other question or thought? Very good. Uh, when I think about the normal uh, August board meeting, we talk about opening school. This is a challenge indeed, and we appreciate everybody's cooperation. The second thing on my report tonight was a high school accreditation report. Um, 
All board members received that as part of our workshop, shared administrative school board workshop um, a week ago, and that uh, I assume you've had a chance to look at it. Rick is here to address any uh, particular questions. I would just address, um, remind you that this report came in at the end of June and that it has not yet been distributed to staff. They will get this, of course, next week and I'm sure are looking forward to looking through it. It is a positive report. It commends Cape Elizabeth High School for many of, it, of, it, of the obviously fine programs and hard work of the staff, um, the student body, make nice comments about the student body too. And um, in general, reflect, I think, uh, what we like to think Cape Elizabeth High School can be and is. There are recommendations for things for us to work on, and Rick is here to address the process we will use for that. Okay. Just a reminder, this was the culmination of a two-year study which we did in-house before the visitation group came last spring. And I believe I reported it, I think it was the April meeting, in which uh, uh, we mentioned that the the uh, evaluation had been completed and that a report would, would be forthcoming. Finally, the 44-page document, document did arrive. Um, and one of the things I must say, it was a, a very pleasing for the faculty and myself going through the process. It was really a, an opportunity for us to kind of self-evaluate um, what was going on at the high school. The recommendations that are placed here, we are not required to follow all of the recommendations. What my uh, task now is over the next two years is to come up with some key issues or recommendations from here and at that point develop that with our high school goals over the next two years and at that point the, the accreditation team will, we will send forward our recommendations or our, how we have addressed the recommendations that they have made. But it, they allow us to, to decide how to prioritize those and a, cu a couple of the key issues have to do primarily with systematic issues. If you look, a lot of it has to do with curriculum more so in the high school, but how does that coordinate with middle school, high school, and there are some real areas here that we knew that, that we needed to develop, and it just reinforced that. On the other hand, I must say that they were very pleased with the support that not only the community, but also that the faculty gave the committee that was here and had nothing but great things to say about this place, and one of the chores, as Don Sturgeon said, it's our job to come up with recommendations, Rick. I hope you realize that. So, though it may look like there's a lot of work ahead of us, there's a lot of positive uh, information in here also that reassures us that we're doing the right thing. I want to add one thing before we get on to this concerning what Mr. Ray mentioned. You know, I just want to reiterate to the, the, the board that we do have 40 high school students who work in a Big Buddy program. We do have about 18 students who have worked in the volunteer program with kindergarten. I hope that our students will also as, assist in some of the, uh, the, the uh, issues down in, in the cafeteria and become helpful volunteers during the lunch period time. Um, you have to realize many of these students have been there as kindergarten students, but also as extended day kids when they have gone through our halls uh, two and three years ago uh, with community services. So that a lot of the kids are familiar with the area. And our students, I believe, are, are very uh, appreciative of that and, and, and give them their space. And I think it's a very, I look forward to it as an, a real challenge for us and our kids um, to, to really show the, the elementary kids that they wanted and, and are welcome. And I think if you talked with the kindergarten teachers over the last couple of years, they have had nothing but positive things to say about how the high school students have treated them. So I hope that we can build off that uh, and to, to your concern, uh, Charlie, about that. I realize that there will be supervision in the cafeteria when, when our students are down there. We have good students and we have very helpful, accommodating students, but we are pushing this particular body of students' space and we're starting to infringe more and more on that space and this is one of their areas of hangout. That was my concern. Yeah. And one of the things that you mentioned, I will, when we have our first day assembly, that'll be a major issue that we'll talk about, that there are more youngsters in our school that we need to, to you know, appreciate and, and help out. So uh, I think that'll come, come forward. Any questions on the accreditation? Yeah. Mine was on process and you explained a little bit of that. I would like, once the staff has, has read this and had some input and you've had some meetings concerning this, I'd like to have some kind of a board workshop okay. with the staff because I, I think it's a, it's a total community effort okay. in how we and, and one answer of the things this I and recommend. Do, Charlie, is, is also um, as, as, as the report is divided by departments and categories, my intent is to go back to the departments, look at the recommendations and then report back to the entire uh, faculty as far as where they see them going and then presenting to, in a workshop fashion. Uh, to the board and community uh, where we plan to go with it. So I agree with you. I think we need to do that. 
It was also interesting that one of the themes that seemed to come out of this process was the time away from curriculum and curriculum development to, mm -hmm. to get ready for this inspection. Mm -hmm. And that was evidently quite evident in you know, the interviews. The one thing that really seemed to stand out, and it was under general observations on page three, and it was the fourth paragraph. And I think it's something that we hear about in this community a lot. And it has to do with how the committee members were very impressed about the positive aspects of the educational opportunities afforded our Cape Elizabeth students. However, they recognized some as aspects that needed address addressing. And one of those is the pressure that this community and the parents put on students. And that's to be like everybody else and to uh, aspire and and go on to four-year degrees and that kind of thing. And it's a tone that, that, that an outside investigating um, unit keyed in on. And I think it's very pertinent. And I think it's something that we as a community need to address. Okay. I agree. Beth? Um, I just had one comment. Um, I really actually enjoyed reading this because I learned a lot about the high school and the high school staff that I probably didn't know before. Um, and I guess one of the things that I just want to be sure that happens from this is that not only the high school departments look at the recommendations, but that the departments throughout the system look at them. Because a lot of the recommendations are to, I know in um, social studies and different areas, to look at it more on a, um, a whole system basis. Exactly. And that's one of, again, starting the sheet to look at that and, and talking with Nancy about having social studies, English, math, start that coordination of Yeah, and so that this report should be shared yeah. with and all it, of this. And really, I think it's very accurate as to, as to what our needs are and, and where, we need, where we need to look. So yeah. I, again, I think uh, to, to, to uh, compliment the committee that was here, of 14 people, I think in the four-day period and through their interviews, they, they came up with a very concise but yet uh, very accurate, uh, ar accurate uh, you know, situation for us. Yeah. Thank you. Anybody else? No, Rick, I, I would just like to say I agree with what the other two board members have said. And I really did think it was, it was remarkable um, what a fair um, view they took of the school. I mean, they, should, they, they really saw the, um, the positives and they saw the places we need to work. What was gratifying to me was that it was obvious in a lot of their comments that they heard from the staff that they know, they, you know that there are places that we need work. That, that's very encouraging. It's not like anything in here is going to come as a great shock. Most of these things are things we're already working on. Um, so, so like Charlie, I would agree that it would be good to keep the board and the community, um, you know, apprised of what's going on. And um, so we'll just look forward to hearing from you on Thank you. Okay. how you set up. And as, as you go through this at any time, you know, if you have some questions, uh, give me a call if there's some issues here that, you, that you'd like more clarity or clarification of. And we can, you know, either over the phone or have you come in for a meeting and, and talk about them or meet with a specific department if you'd like. Okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Rick. Thank you, Rick. Um, moving on, I think the uh, next item I'll just touch on quickly because there are a few other business items here. Uh, I'd just like to uh, summarize. The summer started with a workshop with the school board. Uh, we are aware that we have three new school board members with uh, one other who joined us during the year last year. So that this is essentially a uh, large proportion of new board members. And we're trying to have some activities that will not only orient new board members, but also give um, the former and or senior members of the group, as well as the new members, a chance to get to know each other. One of those opportunities was uh, in July. We talked about each board member uh, listed um, thoughts they had about goals, issues, areas that they thought the, uh, that we should be particularly focusing on this year. Uh, we had some discussion of those at that point. I then summarized those, and uh, we had further discussion. Uh, those were also looked at uh, last week by a workshop where every board member and every administrator was present. Uh, the administrators then continued meeting for, uh, for the next day and a half, talking about ways to actually implement those goals, as well as a number of housekeeping and uh, what we usually call nuts and bolts this time of year, some of which you've already heard. I think this process now is well established. It is one that we started four years ago, or three years ago, I guess, to be more accurate. And um, I feel now that we have a kind of an historical context. And as we, uh, we finish this process for this year, 
Uh, I'll make a very quick comment under seven on unfinished business on the goals because I know that they're really there, almost there, but not quite. Um, that summary becomes part of a continuing record. And those of you who are new to the board can look back over that record. I shared with you some of the ones that have been set in the last three years. Um, nothing ever starts at ground zero every year. It's always a continuation, so I think the process is working for us, unless you have some particular comment. Um, I do have a summary started of the, the administrator's workshop, and due to a few things that have happened in the past week, I haven't finished it. But it is about half done, and you will get it as soon as I get it finished, and make sure that if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Okay? Okay. And that's my Any questions, comments? <clears throat> I would just like to say I think the workshops were very helpful, both for board members to get to know each other and for the new board members to get to know the administrators. And um, I think this is a good process mm. going through. Thank you. Uh, the next item is school board <coughs> subcommittees and reports. And the first is finance subcommittee. I'll turn it over to Charlie. Uh, we met as a committee of the whole, meaning the whole school board mm -hmm. was there <laughs> at 6.30 this evening in the superintendent's conference room. We signed the warrants. Uh, we reviewed the 93-94 year-end appropriations report. We reviewed the special revenue accounts and federal grants for the past year. And we dealt with the compensation for, building, for our building owner representative and communicator, which is Sue Weatherby. Okay. Any comments from everyone who was there? No? Uh, moving on to school building committee. Um, Connie, if you want to summarize that meeting. Right. We had um, a school building committee meeting in July that uh, tried to establish some rules of the road for how we're going to deal with change orders, uh, as well as the, uh, of course, a major part of it was the update from the clerk of the works, Jim Gilman, uh, as to exactly where we were at that time, and also uh, a summary from the school's point of view from Sue. Um, we will be having another school building committee meeting uh, this Thursday. I would anticipate that we will, at that point, because we do have some change orders, will be clarifying what that is. In essence, for those of you who may not be uh, totally aware of what I'm talking about, when the project is put together, there, of course, are plans drawn and agreements since part of the project uh, documentation, exactly what will happen. In fact, as you get on the field, things change. That is, some conditions are hard to predict. Some you simply don't know. For instance, you heard a comment from um, Sue about blasting, which was discussed at some length uh, at our last meeting with the uh, planning board, the concern about blasting being big enough so that we had a condition put on our uh, acceptance that we would be notifying parents sh uh, should blasting have to occur during school time. Uh, I'm relieved to say that, as far as we know, it has been finished. We always have to say, as far as we know, because there may be some condition that, that crops up that we don't know about. That turned out to be far less of a problem than had it really been anticipated. Other uh, change orders, however, deal with things like, um, uh, for instance, we have taken a good look at the accessibility. You heard Sue again going on about a loop by the um, well, what is now Charlie, or used to be Charlie Freeman's office, or the IA wing. Uh, that was not in the original plan. It clearly became the way in which we can facilitate uh, transportation, uh, entrance into the building. does require a change order. It will require our um, approval process kicking in. So we'll find out how good our estimates were. In essence, for anything $5,000 or less, given $5,000, it's you know, within a few hundred dollars of that either way, uh, I'm empowered to, or authorized to sign a change order to OK it, not so much sign the formal piece of paper to OK the work to go forward um, on the recommendation of the clerk of the works of the architects um, group, as well as our own um, in-house people if they're involved. This is often necessary because, thing, as I said, things crop up, certainly right now, in our effort to make sure that we get school open and ready. There are a couple of things that came up. We'll be discussing those at the building committee. Those of you who are part of that, you'll get a feel for that process. Also, the fourth Thursday of every month, which again is this Thursday, um, is our requisition meeting, where we sit down with the architect's representative, with the, our general contractor, and with, with, depending on exactly what 
the focus of the work is at the time various other subcontractors representatives uh, those meetings are held at 10 o'clock uh, on Thursday morning for Thursday and the building committee meeting has been set for the evening in order for us to be able to deal with any decisions that have to be made that couldn't have been made during the day and also to receive authorization from the building committee change orders do seem to be at a minimum that is the reputation for the architectural firm we're dealing with particularly I will say with the clerk of the works we're dealing with he is uh, obviously very skillful and I think has uh, our best interest in mind too also pleased to report that the asbestos removal, which I know a lot of people are skeptical about asbestos removal, uh, and it's a hard one to predict, but we are just about done with it, uh, with a few extra surprises, but by and large, um, really want to compliment the group that did it. I think it's gone on well. Other than that, I think that covers the major issues, if there are any questions or comments. We're sort of off and running with the construction phase of the project. I think we're dealing with colors, on, <laughs> among saying, other things, which I'm not yeah. particularly looking forward to, to be honest. But oh, it'll be fun. Uh, <laughs> just just to give you a you know a little bit of uh, something we haven't mentioned tonight, we also are continuing a transition team meeting. Now, this is something we used when we were dealing with the kindergarten move. We used it last year. We're continuing to use it. We invited teachers to come because. It's very hard in the summer for us to absolutely communicate with every staff member, with every parent. People are on vacation, even if we send things home or even if we have discussions like this in open meeting. And um, th one of the anxieties of our staff has been, can we get into the buildings? And there's been a different timeline. But if I'm correct, Sue, so everything is going to be available either this Friday or next Monday, including the portables? Yes. Right. Um, and we understand and have tried to make as many accommodations as we can, including assigning custodians. Once again, Sue O'Quinn is at that phone number to take requests from staff members if they want somebody assigned to help them. Uh, in the spring, we sent trucks home. We used our people, uh, custodians as well, in some cases high school kids, to uh, take things home. We realized that was a real problem for staff to have to empty out everything and now have to bring it back again. Uh, I just want the public to be aware that we have been making those efforts. We'll continue to do that, and I hope staff will continue to um, ask for our help. Um, one issue that was brought up at a recent transition meeting we had was about, um, particularly for primary grades, what about sitting on the floor? Tiles have had to be removed, and it doesn't look as bad as it sounded like it was going to look. Actually, it doesn't look too bad, but it's still not something that you would want children sitting on. Uh, one suggestion from the contractor was what I had, I don't know any word to describe them except to call them little prayer mats, sort of yai by yai pieces of carpeting. The idea was to have kids stack them in the corner, take them, sit down on them. Um, when we talked to teachers about that, they really did not think that was a particularly good idea. So we have gone forward with uh, finding a non-allergenic carpeting at a reasonable price because at this point we obviously don't want to be spending monies that need to go into the um, you know, refurbishing the final building um, and uh, cutting it, having them cut it. Is it 9 by 12, Sue? Yes. Yeah, 9 by 12. So that um, these, of course, are primarily for primary grades. They will have a covering and there'll be some covering in other kinds of rooms. Um, so we're, we're putting our heads together in every way that we can to come up with things that will be user friendly. Um, and uh, if anything uh, people are worried about out there, please let us know. We will try to hear your concern and deal with it. So much for the building. Okay, moving on to policy subcommittee. Beth? Um, I just wanted to report that we met one time over the summer as a full committee and then we had another meeting with the superintendent, chairman of the school board and myself as um, chairman of the policy subcommittee to discuss our goals and the direction the policy subcommittee would take for the year. Um, I'd like to thank Connie Brown for all of her hard work in getting the policy uh, manual to every board member and um, really sorted through. We really appreciate that. And we will be using her detailed lists of policies that need to be um, gone over or reviewed um, as the year goes by. I'd also like to thank Rick DeFusco for his hard work in coming up with a substance use policy for the high school that hopefully we'll be working on to um, used for the whole school system. Um, but we really appreciate all that work. 
Thank you. Very good. Yeah, I'd just like to reiterate, thank you to Connie. That um, policy book was getting to be somewhat of a nightmare <laughs> that I would just <laughs> put in a drawer and try not to deal with. So I really I appreciate it. Dream on. Right. <laughs> it was big enough for a pillow, but not that comfortable. <laughs> Okay, moving on to unfinished business, it's 1994-1995 goals, and as we already said, we're, we're in the process of working through those goals, and we've asked Connie to do a formal summary of our goals, so we'll be having um, a full discussion of that at our September meeting. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to add anything else to that. No, I just, uh, I, I guess just an addendum on the policy. It seems like for three years we've had um, finished reviewing the policy. Uh, book, so it's going to feel real good when we finish that. Uh, we now have it in the condition that we can at least review it. I, I guess, again, I would just point out how important it is for board to have process. And the policy book is the heart of your process um, because uh, board members come and go and the school system remains and that the decisions, especially those that are hard to make, that require a lot of thinking and, you know, the policy that, that Rick brought to us on the um, uh, drug use uh, and a good example of that that's not written lightly it represents years of experience and insight and so forth and obviously we'll have to see how well it works um, but it is those efforts we want to make sure are accessible are clearly understood and found in a way that we can and I absolutely thank Connie I know what a awful lot of work that was so let's see it moving forward Okay, the next item is new business. Uh, the first is formal acceptance of two alternates as per town council meeting of August 8th, 1994. Connie? Yeah, okay. Uh, I have distributed to each of you the um, memorandum from uh, Michael McGovern, town manager, to the town council. I think all of us are, all of you are aware that in August this um, proposal was brought, actually was brought back to the town council and was voted on, um, and since it, I believe uh, when you take your vote, you'll be reading it. I'm not sure it's necessary for me to read it. But in essence, what uh, Michael was recommending to the town council is that we work out some way of using some funds from the project, in this case, project earnest interest earnings, uh, to fund those parts of the project that were regarded as community parts, that is, things that were not ever part of the original project estimate, but that as we went through the planning board process and as we went through discussions with the architects and various uh, community people, it became obvious this was the time to do them. Uh, however, it was also difficult to get them into the basic bid. Um, <clears throat> so in essence, they've worked this through and the town council has uh, accepted um, this proposal for funding them. Um, there's also a condition that the building committee fund, fund the allied arts wing from the project budget. Uh, perhaps it needs a little bit of explanation. The project budget is what was bid upon by the contractors. And that when we got the bids, opened the bids, the lowest bid was $90,000 below the actual estimated base bid. But in addition to the base bid, there was a list of alternates. Some of those alternates were the ones that the three that are listed here, parking lot, basketball court, and bus program storage building. In addition, um, the Allied Arts Wing had been put on that list of alternates because the early estimates before we actually had bids made it pretty clear we were going to be tight. It wasn't absolutely certain we would get a bid that would allow us to do the whole project without some reconfiguration of funding. So. The, uh, what my recommendation to you is, is that you take a vote um, approving, agreeing with the town council vote, and I recommend that whoever makes that motion reads the wording that is here. That is the wording that the town council used for its vote. So it's clear that you as a school board are approving and agreeing with that. Notice, of course, not only um, the, the uh, method of funding, the a recommendation to the building committee to put the Allied Arts Wing back into the project and a condition um, that we as a school department fully participate, participate in the annual development of a five-year uh, unified town and school capital improvement maintenance budget. I've taken some steps towards doing that already 
and have certainly uh, agree that that's a, uh, um, something we're more than willing and happy to do. There is a second recommendation that I bring to you tonight, and that is that because the bond uh, was issued at a 5.5% rate of interest, we actually have a little extra money in this year's budget because we had estimated the amount of money we would need to pay the interest on the bond at 6%. So when it came in at 5.5, we have uh, $60,000 in that interest account uh, as surplus. After discussing this with the town manager, we, approve, we recommend that the school committee um, take a vote to assign that amount of money over to the contingency fund of the project. Uh, it is project money anyway. It is really a matter of taking a savings, a piece of savings, and putting it into the contingency. That will then make the 90000 that was originally um, available for the project plus the 60000 or 150000 the Allied Arts Wing, which must be put back into the budget, then would require an additional 36000 Presumably, the building committee will take that from contingency. It is important to realize that your vote does not do it totally. The building committee meeting on Thursday must also take a vote to put uh, the Allied Arts Wing back into the project. Um, presumably, however, the steps that the town council has taken that you will take tonight will make it much easier for them to feel comfortable in doing that. Any questions? I'd like to make a motion okay. that we accept the town council's action at their August 8th meet, meeting to one, spend 117000 out of the project interest earnings to fund the parking lot, basketball court, and bus program storage building. Two, condition that the above funding up, upon the building committee funding the Allied Arts Wing from the project budget i.e. the contingency or savings from other areas. And three, also have as a condition of funding that the school department fully participate in the annual development of a five-year unified town school capital improvement maintenance budget. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. Okay, I guess we need a separate <coughs> motion. I hope I, I will try. Um, <laughs> I would like to make a motion that the school board return a sum of 60000 from the 95 budget provision for interest payment on the bond to the project contingency fund. Second that. Any discussion? All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Very good. I would just like to make one comment. Yes. I see this whole process as a one town concept process of, of the town council and the school board going out to find the necessary funding and, a, and a, a means for achieving what needs to be done, and that's the total renovation of our buildings. Okay. Moving on to personnel requests. Okay. Um, well, the first item here when I sent out the agenda was resignation. Uh, it now has to become resignations. We had one in your packet from Leslie Knowlton, who has been a uh, half-time kindergarten teacher. Um, and that is in your packet. What you just received tonight is a letter from Beth Henderson, who is leaving us to become principal of Yarmouth High School. We certainly congratulate you, Beth, and also thank you um, deeply for all of your work, and for your modeling of, I think, uh, a special kind of behavior with our children. Um, we could say a lot of, of things, I think, about the last three years, but um, looking to the future, I'd also like to say that I think it's terrific that a high school principal has learned to know the elementary world as well as you have. Too many secondary teachers, and I... I won't pick on high school administrators. We have a couple here, but um, it is really, I think, very, um, very special that you can bring that kind of work to the high school. It certainly should be um, a rich asset. Um, you have had Beth's letter. I don't need to read it out loud. It is a lovely letter. We thank you. 
um, essentially thanking all of us for the opportunities you've had here, and we in turn thank you and wish you the very best. So we have those two resignations. There should be somebody like to make a motion on that. Sure. I move that we accept the resignations of Leslie Knowlton and Beth Henderson. Is there a second? Okay. Any discussion? I just kind of like to reiterate a little bit of what Connie said and to say to Beth that a lot of people will miss you and thank you for everything and best of luck and happiness in your new position. I would just like yeah. to say that also and I have enjoyed working with you over the past year as school board member and before that as a parent. <coughs> Charlie. There have been a lot of hard things I've had to do on the board and I think one of the hardest things I had to do was the night that Beth called and asked me to be a, a part of the site visit committee interviewing process and, and I agreed with it but I told it with regret. It was very hard not to find something wrong with Beth in that, in that, in, during that interviewing process. And whatever reservations I raised, it was interesting that, that the, the broad range of people that Beth had brought into the process, the high school student from one of her previous um, schools where she had been an administrator, was able to, to answer my concerns about certain situations. and, and I think that's the type of administrator that she will be and has been at the school, and we will miss her. I would just like to reiterate, Beth, we've dealt on a lot of tough issues um, together, and I, I just want to tell you that I still have that, that egg you gave me after the first day of school last year. It meant a lot to me. We'll miss you. <laughs> All right, where are we? It's time Voting. to vote. <laughs> we did second it. Okay, all in favor? 7-0. Moving on to leave of absence. Okay, uh, I have a, included a letter in your packet from Heather Tingue, um, who had uh, uh, maternity leave during the past uh, semester and originally had intended to come back this year. You can see from her letter that uh, being a parent has opened up her eyes to the fact that uh, she really would like to take advantage of the contract provision to have a year of childcare, unpaid leave, and is making that request of us at this time. And do I hear a motion? Beth? I move that we ex uh, grant a one year leave of absence to Heather Tangue. Mm -hmm. Second. Stella. Any discussion? All in favor? Seven zero. Thank you. And I have a also in your packet already a list of recommendations for new teachers. You will note on this list, of course, we have uh, since school starting, we have taken into consideration uh, kindergarten resignation as well as a leave of absence. A one-year position is listed. Uh, and I also, um, you may recall, for those of you. Well, I guess all, most of you must have been here um, one way or the other last June. Joe Conroy, one of our senior staff members who retired this year, it was in the paper as part of his interview that he was going to come back and teach one um, a class for us. And in checking with the both to make sure we had crossed our I's and dotted our T's in retirement, and it is, I can assure you, that this is all within the, the bounds of what can be done. Um, but uh, Talking to Roger Kelly, for instance, it is a good idea to um, not hire him as a consultant, but to hire him and appoint him as a teacher, even though it is a teacher on retirement. So that may seem a little irregular, but it is the way it is handled. It's done in other school districts, for instance, especially when you have a staff member with one class. Uh, that's a one-fifth assignment. So as nominations for new teachers for the 94-95, with the caveat, of course, that Joe's hardly a new teacher, but an unusual position. Kindergarten teacher half-time, Linda Alfiero. Sixth grade, science and language arts, Stephen Price. Speech clinician, high school and middle school, Melissa Parks. Special education teacher at the high school, one-year position, Tom Robinson. And the one-fifth position in freshman English, Joe Conroy. Uh, 
uh, I might as well go on for the uh, one coaching position that uh, has come in the varsity girls basketball, Dan Deniso. I move that we accept the superintendent's nominations for new teachers, 94, 95. Um, would you like me to list them? Kindergarten teacher, halftime, Linda Alfiero. Sixth grade, Stephen Price, speech clinician, Melissa Parks. Um, special ed teacher, high school, one year, Tom Robinson. Freshman, English, one-fifth, Joe Conroy. And varsity girls basketball, um, Dan Denisa. I second that. Any discussion? All in favor? 7 0. Thank you. Okay, our last or addition, a recommendation for interim principal. principal. Right. Well, um, when we became aware <coughs> that there was going to be a, an opening, um, and uh, obviously this is something that has happened rather quickly. Uh, Ken Murphy, the Yarmouth superintendent, is a little apologetic about having something uh, as close to the start of school. Nevertheless, um, one of the things about Cape Elizabeth is that we certainly do have a strong staff, and we also have put together a good administrative team, and we have a lot of depth in our um, operations here. Um, my recommendation to you is that we appoint Wayne Doerr, who is currently our special education director as our interim principal at Pond Cove. Obviously, one of the things that I thought you might be interested in, and I did include it in material I gave you earlier this evening, is his vita, and you can see that he's had an interesting and really quite extensive background. He is certified um, as a principal and has shown a lot of interest in elementary education, certainly um, in our administrative discussions. He knows the building well. Most Many of our special education students, of course, are students at Pine Cove. The obvious problem is how can one person do two jobs? The answer to that is even somebody as capable as Wayne cannot do that. Uh, so that my recommendation um, also carries with it the um, fact that we should post in, and I would like to start in-house, to see if we can uh, appeal to one of our current special ed staff to see if they'd like to try a year as an assistant to the special ed director. That would not require certification as special ed director, and we certainly have a very capable special ed staff, and we're hoping we will find somebody interested in that position. That um, Wayne and I have already started writing out a job description for that. It would clearly include the kinds of things that take time and that can be done under his guidance. Uh, and certainly with the experience um, that many of our staff members have, they would already know most of uh, what they would need to know to do that well. We would then be able to hire um, a teacher to fill the special ed um, position because at this time of year, frankly, um, we're not going to be able to do a successful principal search. This is not a time when you can go out for an administrator. Um, whether either the principal or special ed director, and we feel that this is the best uh, uh, and, frankly, a good solution to our, our dilemma. So what I'm asking you to discuss and then vote on is the recommendation of Wayne Dorr as interim principal. That would be, uh, my recommendation would be for the year that you would put, we would put together a search committee and probably by March 1st because that is about the time when school departments sort of crank up and school people start thinking about, well, maybe I'd like to try something else next year. And a good search does take several weeks, if not two months, um, and that would give us time to um, open it up to those people who are in-house as well as those people who are out in the larger community. I also want to thank very much and compliment the team we have there, Nancy St. John. Our assistant principal is working on a principal certification, has not quite finished it, uh, and is very much a part of this team, very supportive, and will be, of course, a big help to Wayne in moving forward. Uh, we have an excellent uh, uh, team leaders group at Pond Cove. These are all folks who have been very much involved in all the discussions about placement changes as well as the renovation and so on. So we're satisfied that much as we will miss Beth, I'm not trying to say we won't miss you, um, that we will have um, a procedure here that will allow us to make a smooth transition. Thank you. Charlie. I move 
that we appoint Wayne Doerr as the interim principal for the Pond Cove School for the 94-95 school year and, in, and also approve the appointment of a, or a creation of a position of assistant to special ed director to be filled by the superintendent second. for the 94-95 school year. I second. Any discussion? Uh, I have a comment to yes. make. Uh, I think this is a, a very difficult situation, uh, this particular beginning of this school year, and to have Mr. Doerr come in and help the school population, all the students and the anxious parents and all of us deal with the upheaval and the, the stresses, I, I think it would be impossible to take somebody from the outside and get them to orchestrate all the um, cir circumstances that are going to come up. And I. I commend you for being willing to do this, and I think finding a special ed assistant is going to be another big task, and I think you're going to be stressed and stretched, and <laughs> um, I think it'll be difficult, but I'm sure you can do it. We appreciate your stepping forward. <laughs> Charlie. Every year is a year of teamwork for both staff and administrators and board and community. And this is going to be more so because of what's going on physically to the, to the plant. And I think that Wayne's knowledge of both the, the school system and his number of years here and his sensitivity to the issues that are present in our system without, without the physical changes, I think, are a positive uh, reinforcement to, what, to a continuation of a good, good school year. Yeah, no. Carla, I just want to say that one of my concerns um, that has been adequately addressed, but I think I should just air it, is that um, I hope that special ed would continue to be adequately covered. And I think that what we're proposing to do will definitely adequately cover it. I'm just hoping that it can be accomplished rapidly. And it was also pointed out to me that a lot of what the Pond Cove principal does need to deal with does involve special ed issues, and so I think that this is a um, fortuitous a situation mm -hmm. for that. Yep. Charlie? Our year that Wayne was away from us and we had an, had a, um, an interim um, special ed director, she was also someone from the staff, and, and she was very effective. So I think we have a very effective and very committed um, special education staff. Very true. All in favor? Seven zero. Welcome aboard, Wayne. I think it will be stressful, but we, <laughs> we all know you and you know us, so I'm sure we'll get through this just fine. Look forward to working with you in the new capacity. We've uh, come to the end. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. So seconded. <laughs> All in favor? Adjourn <coughs> there. Meeting's adjourned. It's about four. So. So when she asked you to be on your search committee, she asked you as a personal. I think I'll say Carla. I think Carla was there. 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 Carla I mean, in that way, it also was.